So for the past four years at COA, I have studied a diversity of subjects, but most of them include, uh, include natural history, education, um, illustration, and then a little bit of boat work as well. Um, and so I grew up in inland Connecticut, a uh, landlocked town, and I found that I was really into natural history as since I was a child and spent a lot of time in the woods and the fields in my hometown looking for birds and snakes. And I really didn't have any connection with the ocean until I came to COA. And in my second year, I became, I had the opportunity to work as a deckhand and naturalist aboard the college's vessel, Osprey. So that's me up on the bow there. Um, and one of the great privileges of my work has been to be offshore, sometimes 70 miles offshore, looking for wildlife. And so through, kind of as I stepped forward and I brought my childhood passion for inland biology way offshore, um, I found that by keeping a sketchbook and taking photographs, I could start to learn what was going on around me. Um, and so all of these are photographs that I have taken during my time here. And so the, the bottom left image is a harbor porpoise, the bottom center image is a right whale, and the bottom right image is actually the Thorndike family and I uh, with an encounter with a bunch of white-sided dolphins well offshore. Uh, but as you can see, it's kind of watching marine life is different than watching a lot of terrestrial life because 90% of the action is really taking place underwater. And so I wanted to, for my senior project, combine all these interests. And so it, take the, it took the form of a 60-page illustrated field guide um, which I, in which I tried to combine text and illustrations. So all of the following pictures are from the uh, final text and they're all watercolor and gouache, which is an opaque watercolor. Um, and so I, I would like to share with you all of the different um, categories that I have decided to show. So this is the harbor porpoise and I've tried to con uh, sort of marry a traditional uh, profile view of an animal with a high emphasis on the actual observed phenomena of a porpoise diving. And so I began plugging through all the different wildlife that you might see in the Gulf of Maine. So here's the basking shark, um, where you just see the tip of the dorsal fin. And then also sometimes they do these spectacular breaches. The white-sided dolphin from earlier. So the behavioral sketches and then the final the um, profile piece that go with it in the text. There's an ocean sunfish, which looks just as ridiculous in real life as it does <laughs> on the painting, um, and the different surface behaviors that you might see them do as well. So for the jellyfish, this is a lion's mane jellyfish towards the left, um, as well as two other species that we get commonly in our waters. And I tried to kind of really emphasize what you might see of the animal. So again, the two images on the right are what you would see of a jellyfish looking over the gunnels of a boat that you were on whether that be a whale watch boat or a cruise ship or your Boston whaler. Um, so I wanted to make it accessible to a broad range of people who would be experiencing these waters. Here are the harbor seals. One of the biggest questions I've gotten as a naturalist aboard the whale watch is why do the harbor seals appear different colors It appear to have like a dark streak along their back? Um, and the answer is basically that wet seals and dry seals look very different. So this is the same seal, uh, wet on the bottom and then dry on the top, and they look very different. Um, and then as I was doing this, I realized that it wasn't just the wildlife that was really capturing me, but also the oceanographic and the atmospheric effects that you commonly see offshore. So these are not my photographs, but they represent um, some of the sort of phenomena that you would see as a mariner offshore, whether it be different types of buoys that are foreign or different oceanographic effects, like the kind of weird streaks along the ocean that you see in the right-hand image. And sometimes boats appear upside down on the ocean. And so why is that? And I began illustrating the oceanographic effects as well. And so here are a series of mirages that are caused by temperature inversions. Um, again, all of these are watercolor and gouache on panel. Uh, I did the clouds and the different types of waves, different types of lobster buoys. Um, and so finally, after a lot of work this yesterday, the actual guide came, and I can actually show you a physical guide, which is 60 pages and uh, published. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and so 
I'm really excited to begin selling this. This is going to be a first edition guide, so it is not complete um, in terms of the subject matter. So I've done what you've seen on screen, but I've also done a tremendous amount of writing. And so all the images are coupled with text. And here are a couple of choice pages from the more non-biotic side of things. And then a, here are some animal uh, pages too. And so in the future, I'm gonna be working on the second edition to this guide, which I hope will be kind of a Sibley sized text that will have all the different, pretty will be close to comprehensive, as close to comprehensive as any field guide can be. Um, and after I finish with the Gulf of Maine, I'm going to be heading down to Antarctica this winter, where I'm gonna be working on a cruise ship as a expedition guide and Zodiac driver. So I'll be doing this work uh, in the south. So, thank you.